What's going on my fellow seafarers, 6-3 here. Many of you have come to this channel from my Sea of Thieves content, and while in the beginning the game was pretty barren, much has changed in the last few months, and after having returned myself, I can happily say Sea of Thieves is in a good place with even more exciting content coming soon. That being said, if you're thinking about returning, or if you're new and still don't have a full grasp on the world yet, this video will help to get you back up to speed. First up, we have rowboats. These are a must-have, and if you can't find one on the outpost island that you spawn at, since you can find them there, it is definitely worth stopping at an island to pick one up if you see one. From afar, the rowboat will shimmer sitting on the shore just like what a piece of loot looks like floating in the ocean at a far distance. Getting the boat fairly close to and perpendicular to the back of the boat will give you an option to dock it to your ship. Personally, I think it's easier to turn your camera around while paddling since in that scenario, whether you're on PC or Xbox, using the left trigger or left movement key will actually move you in that direction as opposed to the opposite if you're facing the default way. Several new ways to die have been added to the game besides other players, and in the event your ship does sink, your rowboat will automatically detach and be waiting for you to load up your loot so you at least have one more chance to turn it in. In addition, the Megalodon, Ghost Ship, and Kraken will usually leave you alone after your ship sinks, giving you at least one last chance with your loot. Although, at this point, if you die, you'll respawn on your new boat, but your loot will remain on the rowboat. Make sure you always know where you are in case you die, or else you're going to make the day of the next passerby. Second, we have the new and improved gunpowder barrels. Inside each loot room of a skeleton fort, in addition to several normal gunpowder barrels, there will be one stronghold gunpowder barrel. Not only is this worth about 4-5 thousand gold if you sell it to the merchants, it can cause quite a lot of damage. Most players will store their gunpowder barrels in the crow's nest so that if they explode, they won't hurt crew members or the boat. Even when in the crow's nest, if the stronghold gunpowder barrel explodes, not only will it likely kill everyone on board, but it will put 8 holes in your boat on the lower level, even from the crow's nest, almost guaranteeing that your boat sinks. Both types of gunpowder barrels now have a 5 second fuse, which can be started with either the left click on PC or the right trigger on Xbox, and extinguished with the right click or left trigger, which does reset the fuse timer. This can be very useful for both PvP and PvE. Gunpowder barrels also do not need to have their fuse lit to do damage to boats, as they will explode on contact with the outside of the hull, whether they are lit or not. Thirdly, we have ship alliances. If you go to the crow's nest, you will see a box opposite the bell labeled the ship flag box. In addition to showing a cosmetic flag, on the alliances tab, you can opt to raise the alliance flag, which if raised with another boat, you can form an alliance. There's not a limit to how many ships can be in an alliance, and it is possible to get all six ships on the server into an alliance, which can be very profitable. The crew who turns in loot will still get 100% of the original value, and in addition, all members of the alliance, no matter how far away, will also receive 50% of the turn in value. Just because you're an alliance, you should not let your guard down, as you can still do damage to alliance players and boats. And this is Sea of Thieves, after all. Fourth, we have the various AI enemies such as the Kraken, Megalodon, and Ghost Ship. I'll focus on the last two, since the Kraken has been in the game since the beginning, and can be defeated by shooting the tentacles while repairing the holes it periodically puts in your boat. Shortly after that, the Megalodon was released, which will circle the boat, giving you ample time to hit it with cannonballs, and periodically it will charge the boat and bite it. You want to be below deck as much as possible when it charges, as you will take less damage and be in a better position to make quick repairs. And hitting it about 20 or 30 times will land you a kill. There are five different color variations, with the white Shrouded Ghost being the most rare, but dropping the same random loot as all the others. If you don't want to fight the Megalodon, you can either ignore it, or if you accidentally aggro it, sail near an island and into more shallow water, and it will go away, as it is quite a large beast once you see it underwater. Lastly, we have the Ghost Ship. One will periodically pop up right beside your own ship, and you will sometimes see them casually roaming around. They are pretty good at staying on your tail, but you can lose them pretty easily by sailing around an island and going in the opposite direction. 
They will shoot you with various special balls and guns too if you get really close. Make sure to repair quickly as they can make a few holes in a short period of time and then with the right special ball, cause your boat to take on a significant amount of water. You will also see a ghost ship cloud in the sky, which if you follow will lead you to an event similar to the Skull Fort, only this is a ghost fleet. At first you will face a ghost galleon, followed by two ghost sloops, and then two ghost galleons, all back to back. You want to be well coordinated for this and bring a few hundred cannonballs as well as ample planks and bananas. Fifth, we have the new special cannonballs. These can be found randomly in barrels mixed in with the regular balls and provide an additional layer of difficulty in both PvP and PvP. As I mentioned before, the skeleton ships will also shoot a variety of special balls at you. There are many different kinds and their abilities range from causing damage to the crew, angling the cannons up in the air, locking you out of your resources, raising or dropping the anchor, putting you to sleep, uh, slowing your ship, or making the ship sit lower in the water. One of the most deadly special balls is the ballast ball. This is the one that does make your ship sit much lower in the water and extremely effective against both player and skeleton galleons. Many people don't repair the middle deck since water doesn't normally come through and they don't want to waste the planks. And they can have many holes present there and with a ballast ball all of those holes will start to take on water in addition to any lower holes causing a ship to sink extremely quickly. Since the special balls only last for about 10 to 12 seconds, everyone should be focused on bailing until the effect wears off in order to survive. And lastly, we have the Devil's Roar. This is a fairly new DLC, which adds a new region to your map to the Far East. There's an outpost in the Devil's Roar, which gives voyages specific to that region, and anything you turn in from that region gives double the gold and XP. The extra rewards are not without extra risk though. The islands on the Devil's Roar have volcanoes which just shake the ground and cause an earthquake, or the volcanoes can actually erupt, throwing rocks out to sea for a large radius and superheating the water around it which will cause damage if you're in the water. In addition, the islands also periodically spawn geysers which will throw you up into the air and you'll take damage when you fall, unless it's in deep enough water. Geysers will instantly kill any skeletons if it goes off underneath them, and this is a good strategy to quickly finish objectives before an eruption. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you learned something or enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more, and let me know what you thought in the comments. See you next time.